It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Finance Daily, episode 391, How I Got Out of Consumerism by Jacob Lund Fisker of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com. And I am Dan, your host here on the show. Welcome back to a brand new week on Optimal Finance Daily. Hope you all had a terrific weekend. And just a reminder, I like to remind you from time to time that if you have any ideas for us, any topics you'd like to hear us cover on the program, uh, please let us know. You can come visit oldpodcast.com, that's oldpodcast.com, and share those ideas. And a big thanks to Health IQ for sponsoring this episode. Health IQ uses science and data to secure special rates on life insurance for health-conscious people. You can learn more and get a free quote at healthiq.com slash finance. Again, that's healthiq.com slash finance. Check it out. I'll keep things minimal for this Minimalist Monday, so let's get right to our post today as we optimize your life. How I Got Out of Consumerism by Jacob Lund Fisker of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com The blogging world is full of how I got out of debt stories and how to get out of debt blogs. It is indeed a popular subject which is pertinent to many people. Consumerism is not much different from debt though. Unlike debt, which is associated with stress and anxiety of making payments and little happiness, it always confuses me why in the world people are crazy enough to go into debt in the first place. Consumerism provides a short-term burst of happiness at a long-term cost, which of course makes it tremendously popular with the people and tremendously profitable to corporations. Many go through their entire lives working to create a stream of happiness bursts, which they are told they deserve because they work so hard. However, what I realized was that all these bursts of happiness from unwrapping a new computer, a GPS, a lightsaber, posters, BB guns, my collection of knives, my camera equipment, etc., did not last more than a few months at the most. Furthermore, over time, I built up a fairly large pile of stuff I was no longer using. I realized that a couple of months after I bought something, I regretted having done so because I'd rather have my money back. While I was not in a situation where I owed someone $1,000, I was in a situation where I had $0, yet I could have had 500 if I hadn't spent it on stuff that was now going to waste in a box in the attic or on some experience I had practically forgotten about. Consumerism is just one level up from being in debt. Being in debt can be thought of as generating a negative cash flow, while being a consumer can be thought of as generating a zero cash flow. What we want is a positive cash flow. Why else work? My reason was that consuming was the only way I knew how to have fun, and in many cases, the only way I knew how to get by. Yes, if I needed something as simple as a doorstop, I bought it. Money was essential to my happiness and survival. I was as tied down as someone in debt. Getting out of consumerism is as simple as getting out of debt. In the latter case, you stop getting further into debt and you start paying back what you owe. In the former case, you stop consuming. Initially, this posed two problems. One, the source of happiness that is consumerism goes away. Two, consumerism as a problem solver is no longer a possibility. It is clear why some would need something akin to a 12-step program to deal with this, because these problems are very similar to someone with an addiction to, say, smoking or drinking, and just think of what those cost. You've probably seen calculations on how much money people could have if they didn't smoke and instead save their cigarette money. Well, if people stopped their consumption habit, they could save even more money than that. Think of all the never used stuff sitting in landfills, garages, the backs of closets, and the bottoms of drawers. This is really no different from cigarette butts representing expenses with no long-term happiness. Now, my consumer withdrawal was painful for six to 12 months, but eventually I found a solution which solved both problems at once. Specifically, I tried to become more self-sufficient by creating many solutions myself. This solved problem number two. At the same time, I derived a sense of competence, which is very satisfying to me. This solved problem number one. Today, I have the attitude about consumerism that recovering alcoholics seem to have to drinking, or maybe what recovering crack addicts have to crack. Actually, I don't know. I'm not really that knowledgeable about drug use. So maybe it's better to explain it more directly. It's not that buying a consumer product would send me into a spiral of consumption. Au contraire. I find it very hard to part with my money in a retail setting. This is because I often do not need to spend money at all, instead resorting to borrowing or swapping, or because I can simply buy things used after much deliberation as to whether I will find long-term enjoyment in my acquisitions. My issues with consumerism are the temporary nature of happiness, 
the enormous amount of waste it generates in our landfills, and its addictive qualities. In particular, that it is so addictive that people seem unable to control it, and so normal that people seem to accept it and even embrace it. Indeed, if someone claims they are struggling with their finances, odds are high that they are also addicted to consumerism. On a social level, it pains me that some people go to jobs that they only tolerate because they can use the money they earn to comfort them. That's like working for a drug company to do drugs. It's not necessary. Even if you love your job, is there any good reason to fill up your closet and garage with unused stuff? It is also clear that the infinite wants of consumerism cannot be supported by the finite resources on a finite planet. If a way exists to turn all that waste into fertilizer and new resources, I would not have a problem with it. Fact is, however, that we are far from that situation. Most recycling is downcycling into inferior products. I tried to do some upcycling myself with my bike repair, turning broken bikes into functional bikes instead of scrap metal. Similarly, I try to buy things used because that means reducing the amount of unused items that someone else has, which is a win-win solution. Most importantly though for me was that I just don't like to be on the losing end of the consumer arrangement. Realizing that I was was probably the primary motivation for quitting my addiction. You just listened to the post titled How I Got Out of Consumerism by Jacob Lund Fisker of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com. And this one was written seven years ago but is still holding up after all this time, though some of the details of uh, Jacob's life have changed significantly, and you can find out what he's been up to by checking out the newer posts on his site. And once again, thank you to Health IQ for sponsoring today's episode. Do you exercise or bike daily like Jacob does? then you definitely deserve lower rates on life insurance. Health IQ uses science and data to secure special rates on life insurance for health-conscious people, including avid cyclists, runners, strength trainers, vegans, and more. Now, research shows that if you frequently exercise with intensity, you have a 22% lower cancer risk, 56% lower heart disease risk, and up to 34% lower risk of early death. But historically, While life insurance companies do penalize you for family history, for BMI, and other attributes, they don't reward you for being active and health conscious. And that is where Health IQ comes in. They're different in that they will reward you with special rates on life insurance. And you can get more info and a free quote using our link. Check them out at healthiq.com slash finance. That's healthiq.com slash finance. And that wraps up another Minimalist Monday show. I will be back tomorrow with a post from Money Mini Blog. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.